Hey guys, so I built my first PC not too long ago, and looking back, there were some things I wish I knew before building for the first time that I wanted to share with you today. So you're probably going to end up spending more than you think, especially if it's your first time building one. Let's say you have a $4 to $500 budget. Well, if you look at some builds on YouTube or anywhere else, they usually just have all the required parts for the cost of the rig. Depending on who you are, you may still need a PCI Wi-Fi adapter if this is going to be far away from the Wi-Fi router, a CD drive if you plan on using CDs of course, or to install your software, and the software part which is if you want to get Windows, you'll have to pay around $60 to $100 more. But the reason why people don't add that into their build is because it's not required for everyone, and there's a way to get it for free, like torrenting, and I'm not condoning anything like that, but I'm just saying that's an option. Number two, don't buy everything at once. Patience is key if you want to save money, and prices tend to fluctuate a lot. One day you'll see a RAM kit for $40, the next day it'll come down to $30, or a CPU that's $240 that comes down to $200 in the next week. That's saving $50 right there for just from two parts. I would say buy your parts within the span of two weeks to a month, but if you're willing to wait a little longer than that, then that's good. But just remember, when it goes to a lower price, it won't stay like that forever. Number 3. It's easier than you think. I'm sure you hear this a lot, and there is a huge misconception when I talk to people about building a PC. They say that it's just too hard, and that's not true. Think of it as a slightly more complex way of building Legos that include wires. You have seven main parts of a PC. The seven main components are a motherboard, processor, power supply, RAM, storage, graphics card, and to put all of this in, you need to have a case. Mid-tower cases are usually what most people start their build with. You'd want to make sure everything is compatible with each other and fits in the case. And a great way to check this is PCPartPicker.com. This is a great website to check out. It's basically a place where you can calculate the cost of all the parts together and see if they fit. If one part doesn't go with the other, it'll tell you on the bottom. It also updates the prices, tells you what's on sale, and what the price has been on a part for the past two years. If you don't know where to start, it's always good to take a look at the other builds people have made. Another great thing is that there's a place to check out what items prices have dropped on the current day and by how much. It helps with planning and overall it's just a great way to play around and see what you can make with your budget. Number 5. Processor now, I'm not going to tell you that Intel is better than AMD or vice versa, but just remember that once you pick a processor side, like say you get an Intel, you can only upgrade to other Intel chips as motherboards right now only support one or the other, and older Intel chipsets may not be compatible or fit in newer motherboards because of the different sockets. And the reason why this is kind of a big deal is because motherboards take a lot of time to replace. It would almost be as if you're building a completely new computer. Number 6. Make sure to ground yourself. You don't want to damage any of your parts when touching them, so what I got was an anti-static wrist strap. It only costs about $6 more to your build. There's also an anti-static mat you can get too, but I was able to make my PC without it. Well, I hope this video helped you out. I don't normally make these kind of videos, but if you want to see more videos on PC stuff, let me know. And I've got two more videos I'd recommend checking out for building down below. Also, feel free to follow me on Twitter because I tend to post a lot of PC parts that go on sale.